situation given to us will be as shown. Angular momentum of a rigid body with respect to some point in space is equal to the angular momentum of body with respect to its center of mass plus the angular momentum of center of mass with respect to the point of concern. We will consider this term later. Let us first consider the angular momentum with respect to center of mass. Note that here the direction of angular velocity vector is changing. Or we can say that at any given moment, the body has angular velocity along multiple axes. This means that if the object was not rotating about the z axis, then it is just spinning about this axis and thus has an angular velocity along this axis. If the object was just rotating about z-axis without spinning, then it has an angular velocity along z-axis. And this is the case even with respect to the center of mass of the system. So even without this term, that is, for considering only the angular momentum of the system, with respect to the center of mass, we need to consider the angular velocity of system along multiple axes. And in such cases, moment of inertia in this equation is replaced by the inertia tensor. This is beyond the scope of this course. However, we can simplify the inertia tensor by considering it with respect to the principal axis. Every rigid body has a set of three mutually perpendicular axes called the principal axis, with respect to which the inertia tensor is reduced to its diagonal form. Here Ixx is the moment of inertia about x-axis, Iyy is the moment of inertia about y-axis, and Izz is the moment of inertia about z-axis. So with respect to the principal axis, the net angular momentum can be written like this. This means that we can find the component of angular momentum along a principal axis by multiplying the component of angular velocity along that axis with the moment of inertia with respect to that axis. And then we can vectorially add the components of angular momentum to get the resultant angular momentum with respect to center of mass. Now, for a rigid body which has some symmetry, its principal axes are a set of three mutually perpendicular axes passing symmetrically through the object's center of mass. For the given situation, we can consider the principal axis as shown. Here we can see that this angular velocity is not along the principal axis. So we will need to resolve this angular velocity along the principal axis to use this equation. Please note that we cannot consider the angular momentum along these axes and then add them vectorially because these axes are not the principal axis. We cannot add the angular momentums like this with respect to any other axis except the principal axis. So this approach is valid only for the principal axis. Also note that if we look at this equation, then depending on the value of moment of inertia along each axis, the components of angular momentums may not be proportional to the components of angular velocity. So the resultant angular momentum may not be along the direction of resultant angular velocity. So we cannot find the resultant angular velocity and then use this equation to find the net angular momentum because this approach would mean that the resultant angular momentum must be along the direction of resultant angular velocity which we have seen is not the case. Now with this in mind 
let us first find the center of mass of the given object. Assuming the mass of both the disks to be at their center of mass and taking this point as reference, we can say that the center of mass of the entire system will lie at this distance from this reference point. Now let us find the angular velocity along z axis. Let us consider this triangle, which is a right angle triangle. Here we know this length and this length. Therefore, this length will be equal to this term. That is, the radius of circle in which the point of contact of this disc is moving is equal to 5a. As we are given that the discs are rolling without slipping, therefore, in the time this disc makes one full rotation, the length of path covered on this circle will be equal to 2 pi into a. Therefore, this angle will be equal to this term. Therefore, angular speed along z axis will be equal to this term. This means that this option is correct. Now resolving the angular velocity along z axis into components along the principal axis. We can say that the angular momentum with respect to center of mass will be equal to this term. Here moment of inertia of system about this axis will be simply equal to the sum of moment of inertias of the disks about this axis. And moment of inertia about this axis can be found using the parallel axis theorem for both the disks. We know that moment of inertia of the disk with respect to a diameter is equal to this. So moment of inertia of this disk with respect to this principal axis will be equal to this term. And moment of inertia of this disk with respect to this principal axis will be equal to this term. Therefore, angular momentum with respect to center of mass will be equal to this term. Here we can see that the angular momentum with respect to center of mass will be more than this term. So this option is not correct. Now, let us consider the angular momentum of the center of mass of the system with respect to point O. Here we can see that the center of mass is moving in a circular path like this. If we consider the tangential velocity of the center of mass to be equal to V and position vector of center of mass from point O to be equal to r, then angular momentum of the center of mass with respect to point O will be equal to this term. Note that here V is perpendicular to r and thus angular momentum of the center of mass with respect to point O will lie along this line. and will be equal to this term.
So this option is not correct. And the total angular momentum with respect to point O will be the vector sum of these vectors. Now, to find the z component of the angular momentum with respect to point O, we can find the z component of each of these vectors and then add them. Here again, if we just try to approximate the z component of the angular momentum with respect to point O, then we can see that this option is not correct.